This is part three of chapter six, infectious diseases in, in children. So we're moving on to skin. Skin infections can have different uh, causative agents. Some are bacterial. The most common are, are staph and strep. We all have lots of staph and strep on our skin and our skin, if it's intact, prevents it from getting under the skin and multiplying. MRSA is becoming a uh, quite a problem. It started out just in the hospital and now it's out there and kids will get uh, skin infections or kind of sub-Q infections with MRSA and it very often makes an abscess. So an abscess is that pocket of, of pus that has to be drained out. And then empatigo, which is, as the name looks like, very contagious. Viruses, um, as we saw earlier, lots of in, uh, viral infections have a characteristic rash, but there's also other things. Warts are a virus. Um, and then fungal infections. When we do too many antibiotics and get rid of the normal bacteria on the skin, it gives funguses a chance to grow, such as ringworm, um, athlete's foot is a fungus as well. So here's one of our bacterial ones. This is empatigo, and this is so typical of empatigo. Um, it's often around the nose and the mouth, and I'd say it's more often down here than up here where he's got it because a kid with a runny nose, the skin gets broken down, and then those staph and strep germs get a chance to get underneath. Um, this makes this characteristic yellow crust that you see here. This is just totally typical of empatigo. The skin will not heal. New tissue growth is prevented from those crusts. So you've got to get those crusts off, but it's highly contagious. So making sure you teach families good, um, you know, hand washing infection control. They, a little bit of empatigo, they'll have the parents remove the crust. You may want to warm it with some, like a, a warm water um, on a washcloth or something, let it soak for a little bit, soften it, and get them off, um, and then put some sort of an antibiotic cream on it, amp, uh, bacitrace and something like that. If it's bad, they may go with an oral, like ampicillin, but uh, it it's very common. Other skin infections, uh, this is tinnias are fungal, tinnias are um, ringworm. So here's one on the head, and we describe them of where they are. So this is tinea capitis because it's on the head. This is on this guy's shoulder, and you can see they've spread around. And this actually is, is perfect. They um, kind of have this white flaky part and the red ring around it, and then just a few little red bumps here and there, but mostly it's the white flaky inside and the red ring outside. And they are a, a fungal infection, so we're going to treat them with an antifungal. And if any of you have ever had a uh, ringworm or athlete's foot or any fungal infection for that matter, you know it's hard to treat. It's usually about six weeks of doing cream on it, and um, it's just a slow process to get rid of them. The most common way to get ringworm is sleeping with your cat. Um, cats, kittens seem to be the, the biggest culprit in spreading these, but um, it requires skin-to-skin -skin contact, so things like um, wrestling, it's also an issue there where you, you know, have that skin-to-skin -skin contact. Bites and stings, so depending on what you're bit by, it can cause anywhere from mild to moderate pain. Um, so we're going to manage that with, you know, treating the pain, symptomatic measures, and then try and prevent wherever the bite or sting was from getting infected. So prevent those, a secondary infection. When we have a bee sting, we want to get the stinger out as soon as we can um, because it does keep releasing its toxin the longer it's in. So as soon as it's possible, we're going to pull it out. Bee stingers have a little um, barb, sort of like a fish hook, so it makes it hard to get it out. Uh, but the the faster you can get it out, the better. Some people 
that say you shouldn't use tweezers because you're squeezing the the uh, pouch that has the toxin, but getting it out quickly is more important than not squeezing it. But a good way to try and get them out is with a, a credit card. You kind of push down below and um, run it along the skin. And if you're pushing deep and you know pushing down, hopefully you're below the stinger and it will help pop it out. Um, or scraping it off with a fingernail, whatever you need to do, you want to get it out quickly. People who are allergic to bee stings, um, then we have a problem because this can be an anaphylactic reaction. So if you have an anaphylactic reaction to a, any sort of um, thing, but bee stings, you should carry an EpiPen. Most people it's just painful and a swollen red bump. Oh, I didn't talk about uh, spiders. Let me go back. So spider bites you can usually tell because a spider has the two um, I can't think what they're called but anyway the, the way they bite there's the two things that that poke so you usually have that red bump but if you look closely you'll see the two spots right in the middle around here the poisonous spiders we have are black widows and I've known I live in in the country and I've known plenty of farmers who say ah oh, I always got black widows in my my wood pile I get bit at least once a year well that's a big burly guy the same amount of poison is going to be in a small child so you can imagine if a child gets bit by a black widow they're going to be much sicker so a child should go to the hospital um, even if an adult thinks they they'll be okay the other thing we have a few of are brown recluse spiders and those are bad those everybody needs to go to the hospital the skin where the bite is will slough off um, it turns into a really nasty uh, wound so children should go for uh, a black widow because we have an antitoxin we can give them and everybody should go if they get bit by a brown recluse scabies scabies are little mite that burrow under the skin it takes oh a month or more to really start having a reaction because they go under there and lay their eggs and and leave their feces as well and so you're having an allergic reaction to what's left under the skin so it takes a little while for that to be there long enough for you to develop that reaction it's treated with uh, a pesticide um, which is the same thing we use for head lice uh, but it's usually and both of them are the same used for head lice but it's a, a lotion and you put it on the entire body from neck down and sleep with it overnight so it's got to be on for eight hours or so and then you wash it off the problem is this allergic reaction you're having is to the stuff under your skin so it kills all the mites but it still takes some time for that to heal up we do have a newer oral medication um, which honestly I've never heard of anybody being prescribed this in our area at least they're still giving the uh, the, the cream the lotion Oh, I thought I had a picture so with um, scabies I'm gonna go back uh, they like to go between the fingers along the wrist it's kind of areas that bend um, or you know between the fingers where there's kind of gets sealed it can also be in the groin um, it's spread it's a little mite so it's gonna be in bedding you've got to wash all of that stuff and it can spread from person to person um, so just like head lice so regardless of what you think or have been told head lice do not jump or fly or do anything else they just run really fast and you have to pretty much touch head to head or something that's touched the head like a hair uh, ribbon or a brush and kids one of the great things about them is when they're coloring together their heads they're sitting so close their shoulders are touching their heads are touching it's really sweet but that's how they share head lice 
The most common symptom is itching, and often the only symptom is itching. Um, uh, when the eggs hatch, they have to get their their meal, their from blood from their human host, um, within 24 to 48 hours. Then they have a it's about a 30 day lifespan, and it's basically um, their immature for oh a couple of weeks um, and then they become mature and can reproduce and a single female louse can lay thousands of eggs and then those take seven to ten days to hatch and do the same thing so you get um, quite a bad infestation um, in a few weeks so the treatment is the partic particular side pesticide shampoo you need to follow the directions closely because some you cannot wet the hair first um, it will cause the the nits to close and then you won't kill them the problem with the nits all of those shampoos kill the nits after the nervous system has developed which happens about four days after it's been laid which means none of those shampoos kill the nits that are only a couple of days old the nits are the eggs so you either have to remove every single knit from the hair, which is really hard, or you have to redo the shampoo in seven to ten days when those knits are at hatching or have just hatched but are not yet mature and laying eggs. Um, this is hard to get rid of. You can get rid of it in the hair, but everything that has touched the hair has some eggs in it, the brushes, the bedding the jackets um, so it, and it takes hot to kill those so everything clothing jackets hair things everything should be washed in hot water dried in a hot dryer if it's something that can't be washed it needs to be put in an airtight bag for at least two weeks so that the all the knits that might be there hatch and then die so it's a big job things that have touched the head like car seats, couches, all of those need to be thoroughly vacuumed um, to get the stuff up. Here's the the lice. You can see this is a match head. So they're really small. They actually look like um, a little sesame seed. They're kind of that shape and size. And these are the knits in the hair. Hard to tell them from dandruff except that they're glued on. So if you try and put, if you touch a dandruff, it'll kind of fly or this, you touch it, it's stuck on there. If you grab it with your fingernails, you can't pick it out. It'll slide off the end of the hair. And that's how you get them off. You have to slide them off the end of the hair. Mammabites. Uh, often a problem with getting bit by animals. Um, we're going to treat puncture wounds by soaking them in soapy water. And we may need to do antibiotics. A puncture wound doesn't bleed very much, so the germs get pushed in and nothing pushes them back out. So um, antibiotics is, is commonly necessary. Rabies are always a concern. If we don't know if the animal has rabies or not, we will probably treat the child for rabies because rabies is untreatable once you have symptoms. If you wait for symptoms, you will die from rabies. Human bites. Human bites should always receive medical attention because our mouths are really, really dirty. And, you know, there's always some kids who are just biters. They outgrow it, but those toddlers who were biters, um, and anyway, it just bites ha seem to happen, so they should always be checked because they're at high risk for infection. Um, we have a lot of stuff that we can spread through our saliva, so we, we're going to want to check immunization status too. And that's the end.